Welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. In this one, we will be implementing SSH once again, but unlike in the last video, in this one, we're going to set up both a client and a server. And uh, the modules that are useful here is OS, Paramico, Socket, Sys, and Threading. Now, Paramico is what really makes the magic happen here. It allows you to very easily uh, work with uh, encryption basically rebuild uh, from scratch an SSH session. Now, with this, basically, we're going to have, like I said, both a client and a server. Now, particularly, the demo I'm going to be showing you guys with the, by the end of this is how to use this with even a, a Windows server, for example, and uh, be able to get code execution on a Windows system and create a shell that way. This will support Linux as well, so keep that in mind. Let's just step through the code here first, right? So with this one, we are creating the current working directory, having it um, in the correct path uh, of, the, of the file, right? And then with the host key, we are giving it an option to use uh, a host key for authentication as well. And... Uh, then for the actual bulk of the code, right? We, we're actually implementing classes this time. We're doing very prim and proper way of Python here. We're going to actually write it fully object-oriented with classes and functions and all that, right? So we define a class, uh, class called server, and that's going to implement the server interface from Paramico. And uh, basically, we're just going to start this as a multi-threaded application here. And uh, we're going to check channel request and give it self, kind, and channel ID, chan ID. And so if kind is equal to session, then we are going to return that it was successfully open, you know, the SSH session, right? And otherwise, we're going to say, hey, it failed uh, administratively prohibited. Uh, and, if, and then we're going to also check the password as well, right? And... This is where there is, I guess you could say, a bit of a security flaw just in how we're implementing it here. Of course, there are ways to change this to make it more secure, but we have hard-coded credentials in the file, right? So for you huge security guys out there, technically, yes, this is a bit of a potential vulnerability, potential issue, but for the sake of simplicity, the example chose to use it this way, and so the password username password will be stored on plain, in plain text in this case for the sake of example. And so if the user passes in Tim password secret with a K, then it will return Paramico auth successful. Now this whole part here, all this, everything in this class, this is code that you could literally just copy and reuse as much as you want. Um, and maybe in the future look to encrypt these values here, or at least encrypt the password, right? And, uh, of course, changing the username and password for your situation. Maybe it's even going to check from a database, right? It's going to run a a parameterized SQL query or something like that. However, this is a solid template for just implementing Paramico in general. So just a little word of advice there. Now, we'll pretty much get into the main part of this, right? So if this file is run directly, right, if name is equal to main, then we're going to set the server here to the IP of my particular box. In this case, this is my IP address. As uh, Maybe I should expand this. As we see right here, that's my IP address. So that's why we have it coded in there. And then the port that we want to listen on, we'll go with four twos here in this case. And so then we're going to try for a connection, right? We're going to try to bind it to the port, our, our IP address and our port here. And we're just going to listen on that for a connection. And remember, this is going to be a multi-threaded server, right? And uh, if there's any errors, it's going to print them out. And if it actually gets a connection, you know, when it, whenever it's listening for the connection, right, to accept the socket, right, as soon as it gets a sock.accept, it's either going to fail or it's not, right? If it fails, it's going to tell us that it failed and it's going to tell us the error message. And if it didn't fail, then it's going to say, hey, we got a connection and it's going to tell you what address you got the connection from based off of this here. And so then once that happens, we're going to 
create a variable bh session, and we're just going to use some built-in Paramico methods here. To basically, all you need to know is this is starting the connection here as a secured connection, right? Starting the server, accepting, and then if the channel is none, then it will say there's no channel. Um, regardless, it's going to continue on to say that authenticated once you actually go through all the login stuff, right? And then what it will do from that point is just welcome you in. And while true, this is where it's just going to continuously wait for you to enter, you know, one command after the next until you, uh, if you type exit, then it will say exiting and close out the session. And of course, you could always break out of it with a control C. Pretty standard there. Nothing, nothing too crazy with this, really. Now we go to our client here, and it implements Paramico, Schlex, and Subprocess. And the one of the main functions here, not to be confused with the main function, but one of the important functions here is SSH underscore command, right? It's going to take in an IP, a port, user, password, and the command you want to run. And it's basically going to use some built-in Paramico stuff here to set up a client and set the missing host key policy and then connect to the server based off of the data that you passed in when you're prompted down here, right? We'll get to that in a minute. Now, once it creates that session and the, if the session is active, then it's going to go into the real meat and potatoes of it pretty much, right? And that would be to send the command that the user supplies and uh, and you know do all the encoding decoding right, and then continuously, you know, sending commands and decoding the responses that it gets back, right? That's basically what all this code is doing here. It's just uh, taking in the the input from the user, sending it to the server, doing all the encoding and decoding, right? And uh, pretty much just telling you if there's any error with the session, it will tell you that at any any time. Otherwise, it's, it's going to stay in this while loop here, so it's going to continuously allow you to enter commands, uh, just as you would expect from a shell, right, until you type exit, or, of course, you break out of it with, like, a control C or something like that, right? And now here for the main function down below, we will... Be, we'll have the option to get the password and get the user from somewhere else, right, if we want to. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to have it prompt me for the user. And then, as well, we're going to use this uh, get pass dot get pass. And what that's going to do is when it prompts me for the password, it's going to be secured. So, like, no one can shoulder surf me and very easily see what I'm typing. And then we're going to also set the IP of the server and the port that we want to connect to. And then we just pass this data into this function. And we already went over that, so we'll reiterate on that one. So let's just go ahead and demo. Let's get started here, right? So I already started this up, but if I take a step back here, right, I just can start it up with server ssh server.py so now we're listening for a connection and now if i go on to my windows machine i will run the ssh rcmd.py okay so we run that and it prompts me for the username now remember we have that hard coded as tim password is secret now see you can't see what i'm typing that's because of the get pass and now the IP that of the uh, server we're trying to connect to, which is this here. And then the port, number four twos. And now, this is what's interesting about this, how we have it implemented. It's actually going to be, the code execution is going to be from here, right? So I can enter commands on my underlying host, right? As you see here, I am able to basically have a shell to my... Uh, 
my host system, my Windows system, right? And if this was any other system that we got access to, this is something that we could do, provided we're on the same network, of course. And from here, you know, one thing that I guess you perhaps can't see right now is that the difference between this and standard Netcat, that's Netcat, just NC, right? Um, to really iterate this. The difference between what I have going on here and this Netcat is this netcat is in plain text. Now this netcat is SSH. So I basically have the second netcat more or less, right? Because this is all encrypted, right? Just like, you know, that's the point of SSH, right? So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So you can see I have code execution. I can see, now even if there's something in standard error, like I enter a command that doesn't exist, I will be able to see that error as well. So we got the full shell here, so. Pretty much good to go at this point. And that's pretty much all we had for SSH. So hopefully this video was of help to you. You could bring it in your engagements if you need access to this, but you're not able to do it the standard way. Like you don't, maybe there's no, putty's not installed on the Windows box. Cause that's the problem a lot of times with Windows boxes. They're not gonna have access to SSH, at least not without downloading some third party stuff. This is a way that you can implement it provided Python's available on the Windows server. And of course, you can do this with Linux servers as well. Now, if you are eager to get into some more video content, check out the videos on screen right now, the Black Hat Python series. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.